Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. All right, this is Sunday and Monday's Aliyah, Sunday and Monday's portion of the brand new Torah portion for this week called Netzavim. Now, this week's Torah portion and next week's Torah portion usually goes together on regular years, but since this is a leap year on the Hebrew calendar, they're split up. So these two uh, upcoming Torah portions are the shortest Torah portions in our reading schedule for this year. So Netzavim, which means you are standing. And so I'm going to read uh, from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29 verses 9 through 11. And it says, you are standing today, all of you before Adonai your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your wives, the outsiders, uh, within your camp. Now pay attention to that. The wood, uh, the outsiders from within your camp, and then it has in parentheses from your wood choppers to your water carriers. So this isn't talking about people that have uh, just traveled along with the children of Israel and have adopted their ways, and their foreigners and strangers living among them, willing to abide by the Torah laws and worship the same God Israel does. This is talking about their slaves that they've captured uh, through war from your water choppers and your water carriers. This is also not just uh, slaves from the spoils of war, but it's also uh, the peoples that have deceived the children of Israel in claiming that they are peoples from far away when they're indeed uh, in Canaan proper, which they were supposed to totally annihilate, but because of the deception, and agreed to peace terms under this guise of deception, Israel has to keep its word and not slaughter these people. So they made them water choppers and water carriers. Verse 11, each of you is to cross over into the covenant of Adonai your God that he is cutting with you today and is his and into his oath. Now cutting a covenant, the reason it's called cutting a covenant is because the way it used to be done in biblical times was that a sacrificial animal was split in two and it created this pathway of blood. Both parties agreeing to the terms of the covenant was to walk through that bloody red carpet, if you will. Today, we just sign papers and shake hands. Uh, so that is the, the uh, scripture passage for Sunday. And before the Lord, we are all equal. We're all the same. He doesn't play favorites or has one set of rules for one group and another set of rules for another group. We have one God and we have one law. And I must remind you of what it says in Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 through 29. It says, For all of you were immersed in Messiah, having clothed yourselves with Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. And if you belong to Messiah, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. So that's just the New Testament uh, passage, just kind of reiterating what uh, I'm trying to bring out in the old, which is we are pretty much all the same before God. Um, it's not that Israel is the chosen people. Israel calls themselves the choosing people because they chose God. They chose to accept upon themselves the covenant. There's an old tradition and legend that says that God went to every nation and offered the same deal. Every nation said, no thanks, and Israel's the only one that says, yeah, you know, we'll agree to these terms. Now on to um, Monday's portion, uh, which is in chapter 29, verses 12 through 14. And it says this. This is in order to confirm you today as his people. So he will be your God just as he has promised you and just as he has swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Not with you alone am I cutting this covenant or this oath, but with whomever is standing here today uh, before Adonai your God and whomever is not here today with us, meaning those water uh, carriers and wood choppers that were taken um, as a result of their, uh, um, um, their um, uh, uh, deception. Uh, this is also the slaves that were captured in war. So God is making this, this Torah covenant, this Torah oath with everybody. It's not just for the Jews and the Hebrews and the 12 tribes of Israel. It's for everybody in the entire world. And this is what is trying to be brought out here in this Torah portion. Uh, now, uh, so not only are we all one and the same, 
But we are all one people. We have one God, one law, one Messiah. Those things are for all time, for every generation till the end of time. Because it says in that last, uh, that last uh, part of that verse where it says, um, not with you alone am I cutting this covenant, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, but with whomever is standing here today, meaning the foreigner and the slave. Um, and it says also for who is not standing here today. Well, what does that mean? Who is not standing here today? It means people that haven't even been born yet that are a part of this group. Now, to reiterate this with a New Testament passage or a New Covenant passage, let me take you to John chapter 17, verses 20 and 23. This is the prayer of Yeshua Messiah before he went to the cross. He says, I pray not on behalf of these only, meaning his 12 disciples, his 12 apostles, but for those who believe in me through their message, right? That they all may be one, just as you, Father, and I, uh, are in me and I am in you, so also may they be one in us, so the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that uh, the world may know that you sent me and love me uh, and love them as you love me. So it's so I like what it says here at, at verse 20. It says, I pray not on behalf of those of these only, in other words, his disciples, those that were alive and present, but for those who will believe in them through their message. In other words, those in the future that will be impacted by the four gospels, that it will be impacted, uh, you know, by the life of Messiah and, and, and accept Messiah through the testimony of these apostles. So th this, this goes back to the passage we read in Deuteronomy where it says this covenant is not only for those who are alive and standing here now, whether they're Jew or, or Gentile, but it's for those who are not even standing here, for, for those who will be born in the future. So these, so in uh, uh, John chapter 17, Yeshua is not only praying for those that are alive and present during that particular time, but he prayed for us who are alive now, who wasn't alive during the time when he actually prayed this prayer in the garden. So I think that's just very awesome, and I love that beautiful connection. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Have a great week. Shalom and Shavuotov.